I'm Simon Parsons, a professor of AI and machine learning at the University of Lincoln. Big data is, is, is one of those terms that, you know, lots of people have different definitions for, right? So to me, and I, I think this is a computer science perspective, um, it's, you know, having enough data that it's a problem, right? So it's either a lot to process, right? Or a lot to store, or a lot to transmit from one place to another, right? So it's, it's not about, there's an absolute limit over which it's big data. It's the fact that it's, you know, large enough, there's enough data there that dealing with it is, is in some sense a problem or a challenge for you. So the current, the, the challenges of big data relate to, it's a, my view of what big data is, that it's, you know, things around, you know, being able to process it, being able to store it, or being able to transmit it, right? So I mentioned transmit because that's one of those things that people often don't talk about, they don't think about. But, you know, it's still, if you've got enough data, it's often still the case that the quickest way of getting it from where you are, where you have it, to where you want it to be, is to put it on a physical device and transport the physical device because there's just, you know, enough data that uploading it over, you know, some link and then transmitting it, you know, that, that takes longer and take weeks to just to transmit a file and it's easier to, you know, give it to a person and put them on a plane. Right, so there's, there's that aspect to it. There's clearly the processing aspect to it, right? And the processing, you know, you need, you know, a lot of computation to a plane you know, to be able to just handle all of that data, right? And that, that turns into a whole series of questions around, you know, how much it costs to run the machines that transmit that data, right? So they're big questions around efficiency of, of computation, I think. Um, you know, and just dealing with the excess heat from all of that, from all of that computation. And then there are also questions around um, sort of accessibility to that, right? So, you know, how does every, how do we make sure that everybody gets access to the computation that they need in order to be able to process data, to be able to make the decisions informing their lives? So, you know, an important challenge uh, with, you know, data-driven methods is the whole question of computation, right? So ensuring that, you know, we don't, you know, ruin the environment further just by burning through you know lots and lots of computation cycles looking for things that you know aren't there or you know aren't necessarily important so i think there's a, there's a whole piece about the sort of ethics of you know doing you know computational work right you know another related thing in the ethical issue around around the computational work is around bias okay so what you can extract from a data set is only as good as the data set is initially okay and so if you've got you know individuals or groups of individuals who are not represented in the data then you don't find anything out about them by looking at that data right so i think they're a really good example is around you know medical research um, where a lot of the time the um, the subjects that people want to collecting data on are men right so you can build really good ai models of disease in men and you know be able to predict oh here's some measurements from a man okay we can tell how likely they are to have a particular disease and you can do that quite accurately but if you then take measurements from a woman women tend to be underrepresented in the kind of data sets that people use for this sort of research then you can't necessarily tell things about them okay and so there's this sort of big equity question about making sure that we use representative data sets to build the models from which we try to make predictions So what the promise of big data, the promise of being able to apply machine learning to large amounts of data is that you can extract insights that it's really difficult to extract otherwise, right? So, you, you know, there are things, if you like, hidden in the data that, you know, computational methods can dig out and, and identify. Um, and I think a really good example of that is, is actually sort of a form of medical surveillance, right? So the idea that what you can do is you can take measurements, for example, there's, there's some really nice work, so looking at measurements in, in sewage. Right? So what you can do is, is by, by measuring that in a number of different places and monitoring that, so pulling all of those data streams together and looking through them, you can identify you know, new, you know, outbreaks of disease, right? which, which no one's actually reporting to their doctor. Right? What you're seeing is you're seeing you know, particular markers appearing in, in wastewater. Right? I mean, another, another example of that is, is getting a, a, a jump on um, understanding when people are about to go down in flu season by looking at Google searches, right? So all, people start searching things around respiratory disease. It's like, ah, oh, okay, there's something there. So you've got to, you know, you need, you, need, you know, um, sophisticated computational techniques to kind of sift through all the other stuff that's going through, right? So it's these little nuggets of data buried in this, in, in this larger set of, of things. So I think, I think that's, the, the, those are good stuff. So, I think that those are good examples of, you know, the kinds of insight that it's not possible to get without processing these, these large amounts of data. Mm -hmm.